There's a common symptom shared by inpatients and elderly people under nursing care due to being bedridden for a long period of time. The skin exposes the muscles and inner tissues. This is a pressure ulcer, more commonly known as a bed sore. Pressure ulcers are caused by prolonged application of pressure on the same area. The blood vessels in the soft tissues between the bone and the skin become compressed, cutting off the blood supply and causing tissue death. In serious cases, the damage extends to the bone. Pressure ulcers take a long time to heal, which can extend the length of hospitalization. The prevention of and recovery from pressure ulcers have become a major challenge for hospitals and nursing facilities. Previously, pressure ulcers were seen as a problem with nursing care, often blamed on the caretaker's failure to turn the patients regularly. However, due to the increasing recognition of nutritional therapy, there's been a shift in awareness for the treatment of pressure ulcers among medical professionals. There are more and more cases in which the wounds caused by persistent pressure ulcers are healed, or the occurrence itself is prevented by providing nutritional support from the inside, in addition to the nursing care from the outside. What's the connection between the healing of pressure ulcers and nutrition? It has to do with the process of recovery from the pressure ulcers. In the first phase of recovery, the ulcer becomes inflamed and the skin rids itself of bacteria. In the second phase, soft reddish tissue gradually starts to appear around the ulcer. This is called granulation tissue. Then, the granulation tissue slowly covers the entire ulcer to close it up. Something very significant is happening to the ulcer. When granulation tissue forms to cover the ulcer, cells start to gather from inside the body. These cells are called fibroblasts. The fibroblasts repeat cell division and close up the ulcer. At the same time, they produce a substance that connects the cells. This is collagen. Granulation tissue is composed of fibroblasts and collagen, which close up the ulcer. This is how nutrients are deeply involved in the proliferation of granulation tissues. Nutrients are stored in the body after the food's long journey in the digestive tract. Then they gather around the pressure ulcer. The key players among the nutrients are amino acids, zinc, and vitamin C. In order to understand each of their functions, it's necessary to take a closer look at granulation tissue. Fibroblasts gather around the wound of the pressure ulcer. These fibroblasts actually contain the structural blueprint for collagen. Let's now zoom into the micro level. Located inside the nucleus of each fibroblast is DNA, which holds the blueprint for collagen. In order to produce collagen, the blueprint in the DNA must be transcribed and be taken out of the nucleus. The transcription process is carried out by an enzyme called RNA polymerase. One of the most crucial nutrients for this process is zinc. Activated by zinc, RNA polymerase starts to transcribe the DNA sequence. Zinc deficiency in the body inhibits this important process, 
consequently preventing the wound of the pressure ulcer from closing up. The transcribed blueprint leaves the nucleus and moves to the site where the amino acids are connected in the specified sequence. This is where another nutrient, vitamin C, plays an important role. Each round ball carried to the blueprint is an amino acid molecule that forms collagen. These amino acids connect with each other to form a chain-like strand. Over 60% of the strand of collagen is composed of the amino acids glycine and proline. This is where vitamin C comes into play. Part of the proline is converted to hydroxyproline by vitamin C. This conversion is what stabilizes the structure of the strand. Three tight strands of amino acids intertwine like a rope to give collagen its distinctive and flexible quality. If it wasn't for vitamin C, which converts proline, this tight three-strand structure would not be possible. In other words, a vitamin C deficiency inhibits the production of collagen in the wound area significantly slowing down the recovery process. Recovery from pressure ulcers has been made possible only through the body's natural healing mechanism, supported by proper nutrition. In addition to nutritional treatment, various medicines and medical equipment are also used to treat pressure ulcers. Medicines and medical equipment are also used to support the function of nutrients. Wounds start to heal only after a proper level of nutrition. The production of collagen that closes up the wound of pressure ulcers involves a synergistic action of amino acids, zinc and vitamin C. In other words, prolonged recovery from pressure ulcers may be attributed to deficiency of these nutrients. One of the body depletion disorders common among inpatients and elderly people is PEM, or protein energy malnutrition. PEM is caused by an unintentional reduction of amino acid intake due to a decrease in appetite often seen in hospitalized people or those of advancing years. On top of that, the amino acids in the body become depleted due to the healing process of wounds. Pressure ulcers cannot be healed by consuming zinc and vitamin C only. The prevention and recovery of pressure ulcers are not possible without the intake of sufficient energy and protein. The occurrence of pressure ulcers is actually an indication that the inpatients and elderly do not have the nutrients necessary to fully recover. The treatment of pressure ulcers is referred to as wound healing. Wound healing is a process in which the skin repairs itself after injury. Nutrients are deeply involved in the healing process of pressure ulcers and surgery scars, as well as injuries among children and young people. The significant changes brought about by nutritional therapy are also strongly acknowledged by medical professionals. Now, you are more aware of the role of nutritional therapy on the medical scene. However, there is one big obstacle to overcome. That's dysphagia.